Hello everybody. Uh, today we're taking a look at 5.6 notes, uh, which is composite and inverse functions. Uh, there's going to be three main ideas that we're working with today. Uh, finding something that's called a composite function, and then um, with inverse functions we're going to be doing kind of two different skills with inverse functions. First we're going to be verifying that two things are inverses uh, of each other. And then the third thing is finding an inverse function from scratch. Um, so yesterday we did our four main operations with, in, with, with fu combining functions together. We did uh, function addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Uh, composite functions is another way of uh, combining two functions together, but in a very unique way. Um, when we're doing composite functions, we are composing them together. So, just like it says here, we're doing one function into the other. So, we've got some notation here. Um, you can see here in example 1, part A, the little open circle that is different, it is distinct from the multiplication symbol. It's not a closed, just dot. Um, sometimes I'll even write this with an entire O, F of G of X. And what this is telling me to do it's putting one function into the other. So the way that I can rewrite this, kind of like what we did yesterday, what this translates to is evaluating f of g of x. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm taking the function g, whatever that equation is, in this case it's going to be x squared plus 6, and I'm plugging that into my function f for x. So that's what I'm doing here. So I'm taking what g of x is and evaluating my function f with that as my variable. So the way that that's going to work out for us, f of x squared plus 6 is how I'm going to write this. So now I'm taking that x in my original f of x, which in this case is 3x minus 4, and instead of x... I'm going to be substituting x squared plus 6. Now, in this case, parentheses are going to be your friends just to make sure that you are plugging stuff in correctly, distributing where you need to distribute. Exponents are going to be evaluated correctly. Um, so just be careful with that. So I'm going to plug in x squared plus 6 in for x in my original function f. So when I do that, 3 x squared plus 6 minus 4. So in this case, you can see I've got to distribute my 3 in here to both of my two terms. It gives me 3x squared plus 18 minus 4. So I end up with 3x squared plus 14. And that's what f of g of x is equal to. So that's my composite function, f of g of x. Now, just like we talked about yesterday with subtraction and division, it is different based on what order you go in. So in this case, f of g of x is going to be different than g of f of x. In this case, for part b, they're asking me to do g of f of x, which would be taking my function f and plugging that into function g. So now f of g, or sorry, g of f of x is taking function g with x value replaced with what my function was for f of x. So in this case, again, f of x was 3x minus 4. All right, that's from what my, I was given. f of x is 3x minus 4. And I'm plugging that into my function g, which is x squared plus 6. So I'm taking that 3x minus 4 and I'm going to substitute that in for x in my function g of x. So again in this case parentheses are your friend 3x minus 4 I have to square that and then add 6. So I'm just taking 3x minus 4 and substituting it for x into function g. So this is where either you'll want to use some scratch paper off to the side, 
because really we know that squaring a parenthesis means multiplying it by itself. So I'm going to have to do some foiling. I can't just say that's 9x squared minus 16. We know that that's not the case. This is 3x minus 4 times 3x minus 4 plus 6. So when I foil this, uh, I'm not going to have space to do this without making it really messy. 3x times 3x is a 9x squared. 3x times negative 4 is a negative 12x. Negative 4 times 3x is a negative 12x. Negative 4 times negative 4 is a positive 16. And then I still have my positive 6 there at the outside. So when I collect up my like terms and I simplify everything down, I end up with 9x squared minus 24x plus 24. Sorry, plus 22. And that's what g of f of x is equal to. So that's composite functions. Uh, for checkpoint number one, they ask you to, I'm going to ask you to do the same thing. So if you want to go ahead and just pause the video for a second, give checkpoint one a try on your own. In this case, we're still doing both f of g of x and g of f of x, both composite functions, both directions, as I would call it. In this case, now that I'm, that I'm using 5x plus 6 for my f of x, and then x squared minus 1 for my g of x. So again, go ahead and pause it, give it a try on your own, and then once you have both of those two, then go ahead and hit play, and I will walk you through the problem. Okay, so now that you've had a chance to do that on your own, let's take a look at it together. So f of g of x, again, that's telling me I'm doing f of g of x. So I'm going to be plugging in x squared minus 1 in there for f of x, or into f of x. So that gives me 5x squared minus 1 plus 6. So 5x squared minus 5 plus 6 simplifies down into just 5x squared plus 1 is what f of g of x is equal to. That's the easy direction. For my more challenging one, the other direction here is g of f of x, g of f of x, which is g of 5x plus 6. So 5x plus 6 squared minus 1 which is 5x plus 6 times 5x plus 6 minus 1. We go ahead and foil those two parentheses together. 5x times 5x is 25x squared. 5x times 6 is a 30x. 6 times 5x is another 30x. 6 times 6 is 36 minus 1 is still negative 1. Calculating up my like terms, I get 25x squared plus 60x plus 35 is what g of f of x is equal to. So that's composite functions. Again, a little bit different than yesterday. A little, I think probably slightly more complicated. But the nice thing is here, 
you are not going to have to really use those exponent rules that we had to use yesterday with like multiplication and division of two functions because uh, you're again just evaluating them together you just combine them together into one single thing so you're not going to have the exponent rules necessary because you're only dealing with one function at a time which is nice okay so uh, the next thing we're talking about today is something called an inverse now we've used that word quite often we've got inverse operations um, we have different kind of inverses of functions um, an inverse is just something that really undoes the other thing so if I have two things that are inverses of each other they kind of cancel each other out right so like addition and subtraction by the same number are inverses of each other because if I add or subtract the same number it cancels it out multiplication and division are two more inverses uh, squaring and square rooting something cubing and cube rooting something um, there's a ton of different inverses out there operation wise when we're dealing with functions if I'm considering or if we have two functions that are inverses of each other what ends up happening when you do the composite functions so when I compose f of g of x or actually and g of f of x they cancel each other out and all I'm left with is whatever I plugged in so in this case generically we're just talking about f or sorry we're just talking about x in here if I do f of g of x I should get x back out if I do g of f of x I should get x back out if that's the case if both directions gives you just x that means that those two functions are inverses of each other meaning they undo their other operation when that's the case we do have a special notation for it whatever the inverse of my function is in this case the inverse of f of x is f prime of x so that's what that is I know it looks like ooh, that's a bad f f to the negative first of x that's what it looks like for inverse sometimes that can either be called f prime or f inverse of f or sorry of x so i'll i'll do it interchangeably the inverse of f of f f prime of x whatever it might be that's just the notation that says, hey, look, these are my two inverses. So our first thing that we're going to be working with, if you flip it on over to the second page, our first thing that we're doing is verifying that two things are inverses of each other. So if that's the case, again, just like we looked at on the front page, the definition of a function being an inverse of the other is that when I do composition in both directions, when I do f of g of x, and g of f of x, I end up with just x back out. So I'm going to have to do both of those two directions. Uh, do both of those two directions. Uh, an example two here. Sorry, I keep zooming out and zooming back in. Uh, in these two, in example two, they're asking us to do this twice. So they're asking me to show that f of x and g of x are inverses of each other, and that h of x and j of x are inverses of each other. So we're going to have to do f of g of x and g of f of x. Hopefully I get x back out for both of those two. And then similarly I'll do h of j of x and j of h of x and make sure that I get x back out. So for part a uh, we'll just do f of g. So showing that f of g of x I should get an x back out. In this case, that's f of x over 5. Whoops, I forgot some stuff here. I forgot the x here. f of g of x, which is f of g of x, f of x over 5. When I plug x over 5 into x in function f, I end up with 5 times x over 5. 
hey, look, my fives cancel out top and bottom, and I'm just left with X, which is good. I should get that. If I'm just, if they're asking me to verify, they ask me to show that each function is an inverse of the other, that means I should get inverses. If they're just asking me to show that it is, you're just doing the problem to verify that it is. You're just showing the math behind the fact that, yes, these are inverses of each other. Kind of like what we had um, back in chapter, I think it was chapter four, where I said, hey, look, show that this is a factor of this polynomial. You guys did synthetic division just to verify, yes, hey, look, I get a remainder of zero. It is a factor. Same idea here. I'm telling you that they're inverses of each other. I'm just asking you to show that they are. So just back it up with math. So that's the first direction. I still have to show the other one. I still have to show that g of f of x also gives me x. I might need to rearrange a little bit and shrink this down. Yep, there we go. So that's g, oops, g of f of x, which is g of 5x, which would be 5x over 5, because again, f of x is 5x, g of x is x over 5. Hey, look, my 5s cancel out, and I get x for both of them which is what should happen. I got x for both. I have now successfully shown that f and g are inverses of each other. Now those are pretty straightforward ones. I mean, it's fairly obvious to most people, if you look at those two functions, that what I'm doing to my x value will cancel each other out. Right? They're going to undo each other, multiplying my x by 5 and dividing my x by 5 are inverses of each other operationally. So yes, that makes sense. Uh, when you have stuff that's more complicated here, um, again, if you look at just what's happening to my x value, and one of them I'm multiplying by 3 and then adding 2, so I should have the opposite operations also happening in my other function. So the opposite of multiplying by 3 would be dividing by 3, the opposite of adding 2 would be subtracting 2, which is why they're set up in this way. Now, you don't have to pay attention to that at all. Here, again, I'm just asking you to verify, just asking you to show that those two are inverses of each other. So, I'm going to have to show that h of j of x gives me x, and then also that j of h of x also gives me x. So, that's h of j of x, which would be h of x minus 2 over 3. So I'm plugging x minus 2 all over 3 in for x up in h. So h is 3 times my x value, which in this case is going to be x minus 2 all over 3, and then adding 2. So now I have to make sure I'm doing order operations correctly. I have to distribute that 3, multiply it in. Uh, in this case, the 3 on top and bottom cancel out. x minus 2 plus 2. Hey, minus 2 plus 2 cancel each other out. They add up to 0. So I'm just left with x for this first direction, which again, should happen. Going the other way, j of h of x is j of h of x. So now I'm plugging in 3x plus 2 in for into j of x. So now my x value in j of x is going to be 3x plus 2. So 3x plus 2 minus 2 all over 3. A, look, plus 2 and minus 2 are going to cancel out. 3x over 3. My 3s cancel out, and I'm just left with x. Good. 
So that's verifying that two functions are inverses of each other. So again, for checkpoint two, uh, go ahead and pause the video. Give this a shot here. You're showing that f of x and g of x are inverses of each other. Again, that means you have to go both directions. You have to show me that f of x, or sorry, f of g of x is x, and g of f of x is also x. So pause the video, take your time. Once you are ready, then go ahead and hit play again, and I will walk you through this problem. All right, so now that you've had time to do that, let's do both directions here. Again, I'm going to start with f of g of x, which would be f of g of x. That gives me, in this case, since f of x is 4x minus 7, and g of x is x plus 7 all over 4, I've got x plus 7 all over 4 into f of x. That is 4, oops, 4 times that big mess. Nope, I can't write today. Tonight. Oop. Here we go. So, multiplying by 4 and dividing by 4 cancel each other out. That gives me x plus 7 minus 7, which cancels out, and I'm just left with x for my first direction, which should happen. I'm going to scoot this over here so I have some more room. There we go. So now, other direction, g of f of x is g of f of x g of 4x minus 7, which is 4x minus 7 plus 7 all over 4. So now adding and subtracting 7 cancel each other out first. 4x over 4, that's an ugly, ugly 4. Those two 4s cancel out, and again I'm just left with x. So, that is skill 2 of 3. That is showing that two functions are inverses of each other. Uh, the last one, and probably the most important, at least moving forward, um, what you'll use in your, your subsequent math classes for those moving on to pre-calc and on to calculus, um, finding inverses just from scratch is the most important. You'll, you'll use it the most besides composite functions. Um, and really, it is fairly simple. Now, with functions, um, I've got just four steps here, but really it's just two. The middle two steps are really the important ones. Because here, the first and the last step are just changing it from function notation to just regular two-variable equations. Um, so we have a y to deal with rather than an f of x. And really, when you ignore those two, the big thing here is you're just taking my variables, x and y, you're flipping them, so you're literally just changing which one is which, and then you're solving again for y. So here in example 3, if I'm trying to find the inverse of f of x equals 7x minus 5, uh, I'm going to start by rewriting this as y equals... 7x minus 5. So that's step 1. And again, most of the time, or in certain cases, you might start with a problem that looks like this. If I want to try and find the inverse of this equation, I'm going to switch x and y. I'm just literally going to flip-flop those two variables. I'm not going to change any numbers. I'm just switching which one is which. So that's going to be x equals... 7y minus 5. So that's step 2. Step 3 is solving for y. So now that I have them switched, I'm going to get y by itself again. So this is going back to an early Algebra 1 problem. I'm just solving for y. So I'm going to have to add by 5 on both sides. That's x plus 5 equals 7y. 
I'm going to go ahead and divide by 7 on both sides to get y all the way by itself. And I get that y equals x plus 5 all over 7. Now, depending on your problem, you could leave it that way. But since we have found that this is my inverse function, my inverse of f, I can go back to that function notation. I'm going to substitute that y value with function in, I don't like that negative one. Let's try that again. My function inverse of x equals x plus 5 all over 7. And that's really all there is to it. You're just switching x and y and then solving for y again. Because what's happening here, you're putting your y in your x position and then you're doing all those inverse operation problems to figure out what you would have to do to, you know, to undo what you're originally doing to your x value. So in this case, I originally was multiplying x by 7 and subtracting 5, which is why at the end, my inverse is adding 5 and dividing by 7. Those are the two inverses of what was originally happening to x. So that's finding your inverse. That's all there is to it. But again, that is something that we revisit later on. It is something you see a lot in pre-calc, and for those moving on to calculus as well, um, you find inverses, and that's really it. It'll be the same thing no matter what level you're at. You're going to switch x and y, and you're going to solve for y. So for the last one here, checkpoint 3, you're finding the inverse of f of x equals 2x plus 7. So again, pause the video, do the problem here on your own, and then once you're ready, go ahead and hit play again, and I'll walk you through the rest of the problem. All right, so now that you've had time to do this yourself, again, I'm going to go through this a little quicker. I'm going to start by replacing f of x with y. y equals 2x plus 7. I'm going to switch x and y. x equals 2y plus 7. And now I'm just going to solve for y. Minus 7 on both sides. x minus 7 equals 2y. Divide by 2 on both sides, and I get that y equals x minus 7 all over 2. Or, in nice function notation, f inverse of x is x minus 7 all over 2. So that's it. Homework is down there at the bottom. It is page 281, 6 through 20, just the evens. Page 281, 6 through 20, just the evens. Um, if you have any questions, obviously feel free to talk to me. Go back and watch this again. Back it up. Re-listen to me. Explain stuff. Um, but that is it for 5.6. We'll be working on a quiz review tomorrow um, over just these, first, these last two sections of Chapter 5. And then obviously on Friday we'll have our quiz over those two sections. So, so 5.5 was our four, inver or our four function operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. And then today, again, those three things we looked at was composite functions, verifying that two functions are inverses of each other, and then finding an inverse of the function.